It's day 24 of the 25 most notable American whiskeys of 2020. Hello, I'm Chad. I'm Sarah. And it's bourbon night. Sarah, wow. Talk about down to the wire. There's only two, Wait, two, more. two more left in here. I don't remember who, so why don't you just go? Oh, well, how sweet of you. Yes. I gotta find one. Okay. Ow. Today we have Barstow Bourbon Company Discovery Series number three. Ah. Barstown Bourbon Company Discovery Series number three. Now we said this before, Sarah, but we originally were just gonna have one Discovery Series and one Fusion, both right. of the three mm -hmm. variety. The three release. But, um, but then this came out and like... Mm, well, four came out. Four, yeah, sorry. <laughs> then four came out and like, what, mid-December? Yeah, just, just, just like a couple recently. weeks ago. Yeah, um, and it's only like an hour away from us, so Chad went and got a bottle. That's right. And since we had already put three, both threes, the Discovery and the Fusion, in our blind best of contention of 2020, we couldn't remove. We couldn't choose we between couldn't the choose three and the four. We couldn't between the three and the four of the Discovery, so we said, okay. It goes in. They're both going in, and here we are. So we've had, this now makes our third Barstown Bourbon Company of the past 25 days. Yes. And just I'm to not reiterate, complaining. no, this is 110 proof. So on the lower end of the spectrum, uh, not the <laughs> oh, lowest, it's somewhere in the middle to low. It's practically nothing. <laughs> of, right. Uh, and this is a 45% Indiana 13 year old uh, bourbon, a 32% of a Kentucky 13 year old bourbon and 23% of a Kentucky 10 year old bourbon. Okay. So, okay, so interesting. to contrast that, if you guys remember from the episode where we did number four, that was all Kentucky. This is two Kentuckys and an Indiana. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, uh, well, this one does have the oldest in there of an 18-year-old. I know. Wow. So I'm getting a lot of oak on, like, that's what I was about to say before I read the, the bone five. Of course, that's on the, the side. smallest percentage. Sure. But, but I was going to say that there is some oak, which I could hypothesize is, is coming from that. Some tobacco. I mean, just in general, oak makes sense. Yeah, tobacco leaves and, like, a lemon, there's a brightness. I was gonna say like um, dark orange syrup or like orange zest, um, you know, and they light the orange peel on fire over a cocktail and t t do that oh, thing. Oh, sure, yeah. Makes the, makes the sparkles, it's fun. Poof. Also, maybe I could be convinced watermelon. Little cherry, ooh! Uh, the watermelon, watermelon flavor, mm. I would say more so than just like fresh watermelon. Watermelon slushy, there we go. Is that a thing? Pff, probably, I don't know. I don't think that's the thing. I haven't been to the mall recently, so I don't know. No one's been to the mall recently. There is a little bit of a melony note. Mm. Yeah, there, there is. But I like it. It's good. More so it's, on the taste than mm -hmm. the nose. It's contrasted with the tobacco and oak notes, which I think make it really nice and not too sweet or like gum-ish. Right, you yeah. know? Mm -hmm. Made my mouth water. Oh. Uh, then it starts going into the sort of tobacco uh, and barrel mm. influence of the age of these three distillates. Not a not a super long finish. No, not a super long it's kinda, finish. It's kind of I feel like that's why I could now. go for the water. Yeah. It's because I felt like I got no. the full. No, I agree. Okay, second sip. Mm. Yeah. I think those notes are playing really nice together with just like the lightest faint hint of a soft spice and mm -hmm. It's just really got a nice mouthfeel. Pretty, it's pretty approachable and easy mm -hmm. for 110. Um, and I'll say it again, Chad, and I think I talked about this on the Discovery 4 uh, video, but it tastes like it was always meant to be <laughs> this way. These three things together. This and nothing else, yeah. They're not fighting with each other at all. Yeah. It's like mm -hmm. they're all in harmony to bring out the best thing from each one. Again, it's hard to say that not having tasted them individually, knowing what those flavors were and mm -hmm. what got covered up, what got highlighted, but it just tastes very harmonious altogether. I agree. And I think this one might be, from memory, maybe a little bit higher in the rye content. Mm, it's giving me that nice rye hug. The lion's share of this one, the 45% from Indiana, so MGP, um, is a 21% rye mash bill bourbon. The other two, you're at 18 and 13. I like so it. So it's 
you know, it's got some rye and it's definitely in there. A sort of a bite. sort of a black pepper, maybe a clove mm. type of spice in there. But you know that also that watermelon, I could maybe even see some like peach influences in there. I mean, it's hovering around in that melon to whatever now the hell that a peach said is. Melon, which I dislike cantaloupe and honeydew, so I guess it would have to be a watermelon flavor, not fresh watermelon. I don't know though. Who are you calling a cantaloupe, you melon head? What? Some people know that reference down in the comments. TV show. Uh, I'm shocked. Chad made a TV show reference? No way. It's not a movie reference. It's from our childhood, so. Not from my childhood, apparently. Yeah. Well, maybe not. But yeah, very approachable, very easy. Even for just 110, I feel like it's very easy. Goes down well. It's really nice. It's pleasant. It's that flavor, it's almost what I would describe as like juicy. It makes my mouth water. It makes me want more. Um, you know, this one is up there in the price range. Sure. Uh, but I would never be unhappy. Like I'm always gonna buy Discovery Series now because they do such an excellent job yeah. of blending and highlighting those best qualities of those other bourbons that they're finding. Four um, releases so far and all four of them have been ones that we've liked. So yeah, they have a good track record. Let's go and see what they say about the flavor notes. Let us find like out. To do that. Okay. I'm still getting a nice hug. Maybe it's this <laughs> sweater. <laughs> it, could be, it could be that sweater. It says layered maple. Okay. All right. I don't really. None of we've seen that just yet. A burst of cinnamon mm -hmm. and ripe pear on top of aged leather. Pear. Uh, comprise this complex aroma. Okay, so they're just talking about the nose there. Um, I didn't get pear until the palate. And I. I, 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 I mean, I think it's like something After, that when you say it, I can You can look for it. it. Yeah, it's like But it's not something I think bias. I would have ever said. Yeah. And after you drinking Angels Envy Rye last night. I'm not going to get the maple. Not going to get the maple because that is maple city in your face. It's like all the so, maple. Yeah. Belongs okay. in Vermont. <laughs> yes. Or Canada. Uh, on the palate, it says a warm palate reveals tannic oak embedded in rich flavor. A remarkable, enduring finish rounds out our premier bourbon blend. So not a huge lot of uh, tasty notes on there, no. but... But you know, sometimes I like that. Just give me right. a little. I can fill in the blanks. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Me, personally, and I think sometimes people read too much into the tasting notes, and they're like, sure. oh, it says pear. I don't like pears, so I won't like oh. this. And that is not... It's just I one mean, can, tiny... can you deny if you've seen something that says licorice, you've been like, maybe I don't want to pick that one up. Fair. I am biased in that way. But I'll still... Try it. Sure, because I think if given the opportunity, but I was it. You're right. I probably wouldn't purchase it. It was the old Forrester birthday bourbon uh, when it was announced, and we read what their notes were. Ah, licorice. Bet you're gonna love this one, Sarah. But actually, you ended up liking it more than some uh, recent right years. So. And I think licorice is a different note. Like, it's just very powerful on its own and i think licorice is a divisive flavor and it is something that's found commonly in bourbon i think fruit notes can be as we've just talked about is it watermelon is it pear is it blueberry strawberry like is it bubble gum what what kind of fruity yeah whatever is it i think that's kind of open to interpretation so pear peach watermelon things like that if you're like i don't like melon i'm like well it's open to interpretation. Mm -hmm. I taste watermelon, you might taste strawberry. Like, sure. I wouldn't let that deter you. But I, you're right. If it says licorice, I will avoid. You pump the brakes a little I'm bit. like, whoa, whoa. Yeah. Now, we have to go through the tasting because of sure. what we do here. But sure. if I was just your average consumer and I read licorice in this, I'd be like... If I was a normal person. <laughs> yeah, I'm not. <laughs> it's your... Blessing and your curse. It's my blessing. Uh, and my but no, I think overall, uh, why 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 this make it on the list, Sarah? Mm, I feel like we we say a lot about Bardstown Bourbon Company and just how impressed we are with the quality of what they're putting out mm -hmm. and like the expertise of the blending. That the fact that they've been around for what? I mean, this is me off the top of my head, but f five years is that fair? A handful of years. Six maybe, but they haven't been putting out. You know, they were doing the collaboration stuff first, but these bottles have only come about in what, the past two or three years. Um, so yes. I just find that very impressive. Mm. I think some mm. people have an aversion to newer distilleries that aren't more established uh, or wider distributed. 
more widely distributed, whatever. I or, just, I or, love what they do. Uh, sourcing distilleries. Yes. Yeah. I, I do have a soft spot for Bardstown Bourbon Company. I and I thought this was an excellent blend. It's yeah. just delightful. Yeah. I could pour myself another glass right now. <laughs> I'm honestly tempted to, but, no, I, but I won't. It's we fun. have other things to do. Tomorrow's Christmas. <gasps> That's true. Yeah. Treat yourself. Treat yourself. I gift myself. Uh, and if you want to gift yourself, you could go to whiskeyambitions.com. It's our home where you can find our Glen Cairns, our water glasses, our rocks glasses, our t-shirts like this one here. We also have this in a sweatshirt. We have uh, pullover hoodies, zip hoodies, and more always coming soon at whiskeyambitions.com. I almost inhaled, but I didn't. Mm. It was great. Um, I never inhaled. If you want to hear more weird conversations like that, or just get inside scoops and exclusives, you can become a patron at uh, patreon.com slash bourbonite. What is that site again? And you can join for as little as one buck. Again, patreon.com slash bourbonite. We'd love to have you. There you go. Um, Who is hot in this sweater? <laughs> yeah. Remind me not to wear, I mean, I'll probably wear a Christmas sweater tomorrow, but right. remind me not Same. to wear one with such a invasive neck. Right. I feel like I'm being choked. Yeah. I mean, you could... Just roll that up and then go outside in like sub zero temperatures. And she, no, she's wait, doing it. It doesn't go up. That I'm far. Cornholio! <laughs> <laughs> I need exactly deepy for my bungholio. What it reminds me of. Bungholio! Mm. <laughs> okay, anyway. I remember that. Yeah. <laughs> well, there you go. I think we should end um, on that note. I can't do a, a, a butthead. That's okay. Except a. How was cool. But, Th that was pretty good. Uh, I'm no Mike Judge. All right. Uh, yeah. Hey, if you haven't subscribed to us already, we'd love to have you. You can click right up here. There's suggestions of other videos right down here. We hope to see you over in there one of those. Thanks, Sarah. Thanks, Chad. <laughs> okay. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Till then, drink more bourbon. <laughs>